for staying with us. And the red and blue political roundup. A deal appears on the horizon for a government spending bill without the White House's largest demand. Senate Republicans proposed a stopgap measure Wednesday. The compromise would keep the government running through February 8th, while a shutdown would be avoided in the short term. Now, the measure does not include any new funding for the president's border wall. President Trump has repeatedly requested a larger budget for his immigration policies. In recent days, he's toned down his demands. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell attributed the shift to what he called the reality of our political moment. I'm sorry that my Democratic colleagues couldn't put the partisanship aside and show the same good faith flexibility that the president has shown in order to provide the resources our nation needs to secure the integrity of our borders as well as the safety of American families. This Friday marks the deadline to hash out an agreement. And Julia Manchester joins me now from Washington. She is a reporter for The Hill. Julia, good to see you. Good to see you too, DeMarco. All right, first up, what are both sides hoping to get out of this compromise? Well, out of this compromise, they're ultimately trying to keep the government f funded, at least in the short term. However, we're really seeing a lot of pushback from Republicans on this issue, you know, th some of the president's closest allies. And I'm talking about members of the House Freedom Caucus, uh, Caucus as well as conservatives. You know, to Republicans, they see this as the president caving to demands from Democrats or more moderate Republicans in the short term to keep the government funded. You know, we've seen the president really campaign for for years on building this proposed border wall. However, they see this as him caving and not keeping a campaign promise. So this could ultimately hurt President Trump politically within, with some of the most loyal members of his own party. However, we're seeing some moderate Republicans, including Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, kind of pushing back on that notion, blaming it on Democrats. And we've seen that other—we've um, seen that Nancy Pelosi says that she intends, as she—assuming she becomes speaker and she likely will. She intends to keep the government funded. So we'll really have to see where this goes in the long term, because as we've seen before, these stopgap me measures are essentially just band-aids on this situation. So, Julia, how will a new Democratic majority in the House influence the president's strategy for border wall funding moving forward? Well, it's not going to be easy for the president. We've seen that Democrats, including likely Speaker Nancy Pelosi, really push back on the idea that she will give President Trump his um, pro um, proposed $5 billion to fund this border wall. So he faces a very uphill battle in the House. And I think the, the White House is really going to have to do some finagling with House Democrats on this issue. They have the numbers in the Senate, but the House is going to be uphill. All right, the White House has suggested other ways to get funding besides through Congress. Has there been any clarification around this? No, we haven't really seen too much clarification on this. And, you know, this is that's been really the major question around this issue of border wall funding. We saw that during the campaign, the president said it's going to be Mexico paying for this wall. That's obviously not going to happen. And we've seen that now taxpayers aren't probably aren't, at least for now, going to fit that five billion dollar um, bill to board, build the extra border wall that he's asking for. So we'll have to see how the White House moves forward on this. They say they're exploring other options, but we have yet to see them. All right, let's move on to uh, another topic, if we can. Uh, Congress hashed out another bipartisan deal Tuesday. A criminal justice reform bill is widely expected to pass and be signed into law. The president's son-in-law and senior advisor Jerry Kushner is being credited with a victory. What role did he play? Jared Kushner has really cared about criminal justice reform for such a long time. We do remember that his father was actually imprisoned at one point. So this has been an issue that is dear to him. Um, and also, Jared Kushner, he's not your traditional Republican. You know, tr criminal justice reform hasn't always been a true Republican issue. It's probably more popular and more pushed for among Democrats. Jared Kushner was very influ um, was um, present in Democratic circles before he really joined this administration and before the rise of Trump. But he was really credited with trying to bring Democrats and the administration together on this issue. It's interesting because the president has surrounded himself with, uh, you know, different kinds of people on this issue. We saw that former attorney general Jeff Sessions would, you know, would have pushed back against a proposal like this. However, Kushner is really credited with bringing these two sides together. We've seen other, Demo um, I guess, more so liberal commentators also involved in this 
process, Van Jones on CNN, a very frequent um, a critic of the president, came out and said, you know, this is a, Christ a Christmas miracle, because both sides have been able to compromise on this. So this is a very bright spot spot and bipartisanship between the administration and Democrats, and a big win for Trump. All right. As we mentioned, Democrats are weeks away from taking control of the House. Uh, incoming House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff appeared Wednesday on CBS This Morning, and he talked about one person he'd like to have testify before his committee and the new year. Listen to this. I don't know the first person, but I'd certainly like Michael Cohen to come in uh, very soon. Uh, he clearly has a lot to say. Uh, in the special counsel's pleadings, it was clear that he had information that was of core interest uh, to the special counsel, uh, which means that it would be core interest to us as well as it goes to that, probably that conspiracy issue. Uh, All right, Julia. So if Michael Cohen is brought back to Capitol Hill, what implications could that have for the White House? It's going to be a stressful time for the White House if Michael Cohen is brought back to Capitol Hill. We've seen that Michael Cohen has dropped a series of bombs, essentially, on the president, you know, talking about how the president, he says, directed him to pay Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal ahead of the 2016 campaign, which could be a campaign finance violation. So a political headache for the president, really. But we saw that Adam Schiff also made some very interesting comments on Tuesday evening. He said that if Michael Cohen should go to jail, so should the president. So this isn't a good situation for the president, especially in the House, because we're we're going to see that they're really going to drive this narrative home, that there was a foul play here on the part of Trump. Hmm. All right. The special counsel reportedly asked the House Intelligence Committee on Friday for an official transcript of Roger Stone's testimony. Why is Robert Mueller interested in the former Trump campaign advisor? And what might this move indicate? So Roger Stone's role in this really goes back to the 2016 campaign during the Democratic National Committee. And Robert Mueller has been, has been asking and investigating what role, if any role, he played in communicating with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks to the DNC leaks that happened in October. We've seen Roger Stone in the lead up to that, to those leaks. He tweeted a, a series of questionable messages, essentially, you know, saying, oh, um, John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's son's campaign chairman, has it, you know, has it in for him. So a very questionable um, rhetoric from him in the lead up, leading many to question what knowledge he had of these leaks. And we've seen that Robert Mueller has really probed him as well as his associate Jerome Corsi. So we'll have to see what comes from here. But essentially what this means is Robert Mueller is looking at potentially indicting Stone. This could be an indictment if they see um, fit through this testimony. Now, we um, there is some indication that Robert Mueller could use maybe a false statement charge to threaten Stone into cooperating. We've seen that he did that with Michael Cohen and Michael Flynn. But Stone is pushing back, saying that he has no reason to believe he committed perjury because, we you know, Mueller <coughs> could get him potentially on that because he's given conflicting accounts of what could have happened with WikiLeaks. However, Roger Stone says he has nothing to hide. All right, finally, Republican Senator Doug Collins appeared on Red and Blue Wednesday, and he's the incoming ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, he had this to say about working with Democrats in the new Congress. Listen to this. So I've worked across the aisle on many occasions to pass big bills this year. I've told Mr. Uh, chairman Nadler, I said, is he incoming chairman? Mr. Chairman, uh, if you want to go off on tangents and go to places on investigations, that we're going to stand up and we're going to be counted. We're going to fight for not only this institution, but the administration. But also, we're going to say, when you're ready to legislate, when you want to work together, I'm more than happy. And my credentials will say that I work with them on, on many things. All right, Julia, final question for you. Is there a sense on Capitol Hill that Republicans are concerned about potential probes into the Trump administration? They're obviously very concerned about this because we've seen that Democrats are going to go after the Trump administration as well as many aspects of President Trump's life. However, um, the congressman's comments there are a little ironic because he talks about wanting to legislate in the new Congress. However, we've seen that during the, the last two years or the time that the Republicans have had the majority in the House, they've been trying to probe um, alleged bias in the Justice Department as well as the FBI, as well as the Clintons, who aren't even in political power right now. So, you know, really, this is a two-way street. We're seeing both sides go after each other through investigations. All right, Julia Manchester, good to see you, friend. Thank you. Thank you.